ایزاد امروز مهمان بسیار عزیزی دارم که یک موضوعی رو میخوام باش در میون بذارم و او با ما صحبت بکنه که میدونم مورد توجه شماست چون ما میدونیم ایران رو خدا نجات خواهد داد همه ما میدونیم که ایران عوض خواهد شد ولی خیلی ها میگیم خب بعد آخرش چی؟ بعدش چی؟ خیلی از ما به فکر دموکراسی هستیم میگیم دولت عوض بشه چه چیزی جای گذینش بشه مهمون امروز من راجع به همین خواهد صحبت خواهد کرد اریک کسیه که تو آمریکا بسیار شناخته شده هستش کتاب های زیادی نوشته خودش برنامه های و تلویزیونی بسیار معروفی داره ایشون مشاور رئیس جمهورای آمریکا بوده خلاصه ایشون در قسمت سیاسی و روحانی و ایمانی و مسیحیت و میدیا دیگه سره به ما افتخار داده امروز با ما باشه اریک ویلکم Thank you. It's my honor to be with you. Eric, uh, what's happening in Iran? As you know, the government of Iran has lost its credibility among people. Yeah. And 40 years of oppression, the people of Iran are saying, okay, we don't want Islam. Yeah. Actually, we don't want any religion. Yeah. Uh, maybe the next best option for us will be a democracy, a right. secular democracy. Right. Very, very popular yeah. uh, in Iran. The yeah. idea of let's get rid of this government yeah. and bring secular democracy. Yeah. Uh, but they don't know what it is. They right. don't know the good good about it. They don't know bad about it. And you, uh, you are an expert in this. That's uh, why you're here. I don't know if I'm an expert, <laughs> but I think, you know what it is? If you are a real American, you understand what is liberty, what is freedom, what is democracy, what is self-government. Most Americans today don't really understand this. We have not been teaching this for about 40 or 50 years. When I really began to understand this in the last years, 10 years ago, I couldn't believe that I had lived my life in the United States not understanding these ideas. These ideas are amazing, and these ideas are, I would say, this is God's idea of how people can govern themselves. And it's fascinating because it's the opposite of a theocracy. It's the opposite of a government that is uh, saying we're speaking for God. And yet it's also not entirely secular either. It's a mixture, which I would say you almost have not seen in history outside of the United States. Tocqueville, the Frenchman in the 1820s, came from France to visit America to see what's going on there. Because in France, they had the classic case where they had religion, the church was mixed with the government so much that it was an oppressive force. So the free thinkers in France hated the church and hated the priests and hated because they saw this as oppressive. And it was oppressive. But in France, they traded this for no God, for atheism, and these ideas of democracy or whatever. But they basically failed. It ended in a bloodbath. Many of these kinds of revolutions in, in Russia, they rejected the Russian government and the Russian church. They rejected it, and they replaced it with something opposite and equally evil in the end. So Tocqueville comes from France, where they've had this chaos, And he comes to America and he sees something he never thought he could see. He saw that the people of faith, the churches, were working hand in hand with freedom. In other words, instead of being enemies, he said, I see they're helping each other. I always thought that either the church is the enemy of freedom or, you know, he didn't understand it. And here's, I, I, will, I will put it in the way I, my friend Oz Guinness came up with this term, this idea. This explains the way American democracy works. And Oz Guinness, I mean, it's in my book, If You Can Keep It, but Oz Guinness says that he got this idea from all the founders, Washington, Jefferson, they all understood this. But Americans today have forgotten this. And this is the heart of, of, of true democracy that's going to work. I'll say it quickly, then I'll explain it. The, the quick idea, he calls it the golden triangle of freedom. He says freedom or self-government, liberty, requires virtue. Mm -hmm. This is a big idea. It's a big idea. I'm going to explain it. Yeah. Freedom requires virtue. So everybody says, I want democracy, I want freedom. Okay, how? How? Well, you need virtue. 
And then virtue requires some kind of faith. We're not going to say much yet. I'll explain it. Virtue requires some kind of faith. And then faith in turn requires freedom. So, I'll explain it. Basically, when we say what is freedom, what is democracy, what, what is this? It means we're going to govern ourselves. We're not going to be governed from above. Some group of people are going to say, you must do this, you must do this. No, we're going to govern ourselves. We're going to be free. Okay. So our leaders will be elected by us. We will choose our leaders. Okay. So the question is, why does this liberty, this freedom, this self-government require virtue? And it's, it's simple, but m many people don't really understand it. It means that if I'm not going to be governed by some autocratic state power, or I'm not going to be governed from a, a bureaucratic state power. I mean, you, you see this around the world, too, that if you live in many places in Europe, the government is very big and powerful. It's secular, but it's just as wicked and intrusive as if you have a theocratic uh, Muslim government or any kind of government. It's oppressive. So you can have oppressive secularist state or you can have oppressive theocratic state. Now, in order to have neither of those two, and to be free, where you say, we're going to govern ourselves. We're not going to be governed by a bureaucracy, either secular or a government, uh, an autocratic the theological state. We're going to govern ourselves. So what's necessary is that if some government is not going to tell me right from wrong, they're not going to tell me what to do, I have to do it on my own without being told. So all of the founders, Washington, Jefferson, Franklin, Adams, all of them said, this government will not work. I mean, they knew. They, they're not just saying this is a philosophy. They said, what we're proposing, self-government, people governing themselves, will never work unless the people are virtuous. In other words, if I say, I'm not going to steal because stealing is wrong. I'm going to pay my taxes because it's the right thing to do. I'm going to be faithful to my spouse because it's the right thing to do. I'm going to provide for my children because it's the right thing to do. Nobody's going to force me. I'm going to do these things because I know it's right. So the point is that in order to do these things on my own, I have to have some virtue. I have to have the idea that I want to do these things because they're right, not because the government is forcing me to do it through laws. I do it on my own. So the founders all said that self-government means if people are going to do those things on their own, they're going to govern themselves, they have to be virtuous people. And then the founders said, where's this virtue going to come from? Why will people do the right thing? If the government is not telling you with a gun or a threat, why will you do the right thing? All of the founders said, because they will have some faith in some greater order that they believe in that. Now, most people in America at that time, their faith was in Christ. Their faith was in the God of the Bible. They had a reason to do the right thing because they cared about what he thought, not what the governor thinks, what the president thinks, what the policemen think. I'm doing it because I do it freely because I love God and God loves me and I want to please him. So I'm going to do all these things and I don't need anyone to force me. So the founders, and again, I say Jefferson, Franklin, uh, all of them, and not all of them were strictly Christians, but they had this idea that when we see Christianity really happening in different places, we see crime goes down, uh, spousal abuse goes down, alcoholism goes down. We see this happening. And even if we are not Christians, we see it happens. When, when people get serious about Christ, all these things happen. So even people like Franklin and Jefferson, who were maybe not theologically orthodox Christians, they saw that when Christianity is free, not forced by the government, free and operating among the people freely, they have a better ability to govern themselves. They have virtue. They don't need to be told. So here's the key. So the founders see this thing. They see that self-government, freedom, liberty requires virtue. Virtue requires faith. But they said, we cannot force faith. This is the difference between American democracy and many democracies in Europe or in other parts of the world. They said religion must be free. The government cannot take sides in this religious thing. They have to step back and let the people choose 
freely. So it's the opposite of a theocracy, um, uh, uh, an Islamic theocracy, or in Europe uh, during the time of the f when America was founded, they had Christian theocracies. They said anyone in this place must be a Catholic in France. Everybody in Greece has to be Greek Orthodox. Everybody in Germany has to be Lutheran. Or so the government was forcing religion. So the founders in America said, we're not going to have that. In this country, faith will be 100% free, voluntary, because we believe that if we don't force it, people will have the freedom to do it on their own. And when they do it on their own, then it becomes powerful. When they're forced by the government, they're just going to do the minimum or they become fanatics. And when Tocqueville came over 50 years after the revolution, he saw this. He said, this is unbelievable. In France, faith or religion is the enemy of freedom, and here the, the, they're working together. So this is something most Americans have forgotten. So that's why I'm so passionate about yes. it. But I said, this is the magic. This is that if, if you have faith that's not forced, you will behave virtuously, you don't need much government, and then you will be able to govern yourself. So in America, more or less, we've been able to do this. Not everybody is a serious Christian, but if you have enough, it creates a culture where doing the right thing, everybody says, that's good. We want to do the right thing here, you know? And so it's ironic because you, in some ways you need faith, but the faith cannot be forced. You have to have religious liberty. And in this country, that's been a sacred thing, religious liberty, that you and the government will never tell anyone you must believe or you must not believe. I mean, there are governments around the world that say, you must believe, you must go to mosque, you must go to church. Then there are other governments that say, if you go to church or if you go to mosque, we will persecute you. We are an atheist government. The founders in America said, we cannot tell people what to believe, either to believe or not to believe. If you want to be an atheist, you want to be an agnostic, you want to be a Muslim, you want to be a Christian, you want to be whatever you want to be, religion is free. And they trusted that if they do that, it's going to work. It has worked. Yeah. And the idea that I just shared, this is for the whole world. It's not just for America. America has been shining a torch like the Lady Statue of Liberty to the whole world to say, this model, this is for you. You don't need to go down this path, and yeah. you don't need to go down this path. Many people choose one or the other, but this is the path that I believe where people are really free. To have an atheist, secular democracy, in a way it can't work successfully. You still will feel, um, you still will feel the force of government in that way. It's just a different kind of force. It's maybe a secular force instead of a theocratic force, that's but you'll right. still feel the force. Uh, that, that's wonderful. You, you talk the language of our people when they hear uh, that we will have a, re a country, a, a government, a place, a nation that people are free to choose. They say, yes, you know, choose your religion. Yeah. We have never seen that. We have never seen for 40 some years. They haven't seen that and they are really for, for it. They, when they talk about um, Secular democ uh, democracy, that's what they mean. A secular means no religion. Secular, well, this in, is interesting. In their mind. This is interesting yeah. because, again, you can have a theocratic, heavy-handed, you know, government uh, that's allied with God. That's bad. To have freedom of religion, it's not quite secular. It's similar, but it's not the same thing. You can't force people to believe, but you want people to believe because... If you take God out, if you force God out, you're really not very different from a Marxist, uh, atheist government like they have in China, where it's the same problem except the opposite. In other words, you, you have the problem now of we, we rejected God so much that we forbid God. To forbid God is as wicked as to force God. Both are not going to work. So you have to have a situation where faith can flourish, but the government doesn't force it. But if you secularize things too much, you only create a power vacuum and someone will come in and it will be a different kind of oppression. And America has been drifting in this direction the last 40 or so years. We've been drifting in this way. People say we have a separation of church and state. Yes, you have a separation, but you don't abolish church. You don't abolish God. You don't abolish... You just separate it from the government. And this is, a, in, in some ways, it's tricky, but this is the only way that it's ever worked. And it's what, it, it, it enables you to be multicultural in the healthiest way. 
that people are free, they can choose, they can reject God if they like, they can choose God if they like. The government says, yeah. that's not our business. Our business is to keep you free, but at the same time wanting to encourage people to have faith, but a free faith, not a forced faith. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Iranians love America. Uh, if you ask them if there was, there was a referendum today, they could vote of what kind of government they want. Number one would be democracy American style. They think America is best, and they look at the freedom uh, we have here. Some of us don't appreciate it, by yeah, the way, yeah. but they do. They, they know what we have. That's, yeah. <laughs> they want to be like us. They want to be like Americans. Now, uh, America, tw 250 years of history. And it was based on Christian values, but Definitely. not forced Christian See, values. See, this is the irony, yeah. is that America is not officially a Christian nation. And because it's not officially Christian, it's the most Christian. Because once you make it official, you take away the, the reality of it, and it just becomes a word. Great Britain... I mean, I've written books about this, so I literally know the history that Great Britain in the, um, in the time of Wilberforce, let's say 1800, was officially a Christian nation. They had all kinds of things happening that were profoundly unchristian because it became official and everybody said, well, it's official, I'm English, I must be Christian. No, yeah. you have to do it freely. So they had the slave trade and it was real Christians who challenged the Christian establishment and said to the Christian, uh, the Church of England, this is an abomination. Slavery is against the Bible, but the church went along with it. Right. But the real Christians said, no, the Bible says this is wrong. So you can be officially Christian and it means nothing. The same thing happened in Germany uh, with Hitler. Uh, everybody said, well, I'm not a Jew, I'm not an atheist, I must be a Christian. No. Yeah. If you're a Christian, you're going to behave like a Christian. Right. But they all, they all thought, well, I'm German, I must be Christian because... Luther was a, a German and he invented Protestantism. We all must be Christians. Every time it becomes official, it's an excuse for people to ignore it. Just like saying, well, I paid my taxes. Don't